Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers, this one's part 17. The benefits and disadvantages of coal firing a model steam boiler. Full size steam engines largely use coal. And it's worth using a model coal fired boiler just for the smell of it all. However, there are two disadvantages to using coal. The first one being that you can't turn the heat source off instantly like you can with gas. So if you get the water level wrong, you have a problem. Coal-fired steam boiler management is a skill. That's why on full-size steam engines like locomotives and traction engines, they always had a driver and separately a fireman or a steersman on a traction engine. And the other obvious disadvantage is that they are very dirty things to use. In this video, which is a compilation, I will be showing how you coal-fire a model boiler. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. This is called a Kingdon boiler. A special boiler used in marine applications where the top part is bigger than the bottom, which is always quite a good thing. This is a very small steam boiler and it's steamed using coal beautifully. In the end I sold it to one of my customers for a steam plant and converted it to gas firing. From a small boiler to a larger boiler, this is the Castle V6 boiler and I'm just about to light it. So the first thing to do is to light the fire in the boiler. And for this I'm using some charcoal soaked in white spirit. Why white spirit? Why not paraffin? Well I have plenty of white spirit because I clean my paint brushes in white spirit. So it's a good way of disposing of the old stuff. Don't worry, I'm not going to feed the boiler by hand all the time. These were just some pieces of charcoal that I dropped onto the bench. So now it's time to get serious. This is a shovel full of charcoal soaked in white spirit complete with some small flecks of red paint. You don't have to use charcoal soaked in paraffin or white spirit. You could use pieces of wood. But either way, they need to be soaked in something that's flammable. But do not use petrol for this job. And don't use alcohol either. It's best to use paraffin or kerosene. But the white spirit that I normally use for cleaning brushes is pretty much the same. And after introducing several shovelfuls of marinated charcoal, the last shovelful that goes into the firebox needs to be lit. And the fire spreads very quickly inside the firebox. So the first thing you have to do now, apart from get rid of the shovel that's still on fire, is shut the fire hole door. The normal way of starting a fire in a model steam boiler is to use a gadget called a blower. A model steam boiler type blower, often used in small locomotives, is really an exhauster fan and it sits in the top of the chimney and it draws air through the fire which stops the fire from blowing back through the fire hole door. This is a nice feature of the V6 boiler. It's a variable air bleed on the fire hole door, which can be very useful, but at this stage it needs to be closed. Because of the height of this boiler and the extremely long chimney, there is sufficient natural draft to draw the fire, so you don't need a blower. And it's beginning to smoke quite nicely already. I wouldn't normally open the fire hole door so early in the steam raising process, but I'm doing it so I can get rid of some bits and pieces that are found around my bandsaw in the workshop. These are just scraps of hardwood. Every little helps. And these pieces were already in a plastic tub soaked in white spirit. Normally by this time I would be speeding up the video, but I'm going to run this entire sequence in real time. That's why I'm splitting it into three episodes. The real idea of this video is to just show the steam test but during the steam test, particularly on this first episode, I will try to explain certain aspects of how to do it and how not to do it. So now, in the firebox, there is a fire. There's some charcoal in there soaked in paraffin, and some bits of hardwood, some of which is also soaked in paraffin. And now, if I look at the chimney, there's plenty of smoke, and as we all know, there's no smoke without fire, and the boiler is already getting quite warm. Some viewers who don't watch my other videos must be thinking, why has he got a bath in the middle of the lawn? So if you really want to know about that, please watch the series called A Model Steamboat Named Edith. And the noise that you can hear, and the fact that the pressure gauge is no longer sat at zero, means that there is some steam pressure inside the boiler. So what I've just done is open the blower valve, which lets a jet of steam up the chimney to draw the fire. And now if you keep your eye on the pressure gauge, you will see what happens. You can see it moving up in real time. Don't forget, this video is not speeded up at all. I haven't put any coal on the fire yet, and the pressure gauge is showing 40 pounds per square inch, 
No, 50 pounds per square inch, and it's going to carry on all the way up. And there really isn't any coal in there, that's just a bit of charcoal and some bits of wood. And the pressure gauge continues to rise. It's time for the coal, and by force of habit, before moving away from the boiler to get the coal, I automatically shut the fire hole door. But in this case, you don't need to. This boiler is very different to some of the boilers I've used in the past. As a general guideline rule, if your boiler is about to blow off or it's already blowing off and you want to drop the pressure, you open the fire hole door and the cold air rushing along the tubes drops the pressure. But that rule doesn't seem to apply with this boiler at all. Even with the fire hole door open and shovelfuls of coal going on the fire, and of course this is just black coal, it's not even lit, why is the pressure continuing to rise? There's something about the design of this boiler that is a little bit unusual. It's very standard, it's just a fire tube boiler, but the way that it's drafting is exceptional. And the fire is not really burning that brightly. And it's not as though the blower is on full, it's hardly on at all. It's just literally cracked, maybe a sixty-fourth of an inch open. As soon as I shut the fire hole door, the boiler immediately blows off. So I think it's time to run the engine. The working pressure of this boiler is 100 pounds per square inch maximum, hopefully dropping down to about 80 pounds per square inch when the engine's running. That would be the ideal. As you can see, the cylinder drain cocks are open to let the condensed water out of the cylinder. And off it goes. Don't forget this is a Stuart 5A with a two and a quarter inch diameter piston. That is a big cylinder and it uses a lot of steam. But at the moment, the pressure gauge is hardly moving. This is a marine boiler, and the good thing about it is, if you get a problem with the fire, you lift the entire assembly out of the firebox. And there aren't many boilers where you can do that. You just lift out the firebox, as you can see, if you tip it slightly to the left, the firebox assembly kind of unhooks from the main boiler, and you just remove the whole thing and put it on the floor. Instant heat reduction. Generally speaking, fire in a sweet pea boiler with this firebox arrangement is just slightly different to firing a conventional boiler. The position of the fire grate is much higher than it would be on a normal boiler. So you can put a little bit more coal into the firebox of a sweet pea and eventually the fire will become like a big inferno that raises plenty of steam inside the sweet pea boiler. There is the result of last time's steaming and you'll see how the side of the ash pan has vanished altogether. It's burned away over the years. This is the fire grip from the engine and as you can see it's quite badly burnt. It's been in there for a while. Here, by comparison, is a brand new one. I've always used fire grates like this on my engines. Here's a flue brush available from Blackgates Engineering. So we'll sweep the tubes. This is the result of the ashes that's gone over the front of the ash pan while it's been steaming. It's that way around, of course. And all that lot have gone down the front. That's the result. In this clip, Phil is adding some water treatment to the water in the tank because the boiler is made from steel and water treatment helps to prevent corrosion. It's gonna go. This is quite a good gadget that Phil uses on his engine. It's a smoke deflector that just deflects the smoke to the side so it doesn't go in your face along with the soot and the cinders and the ash. Later on in the day I had a drive and went round the track two or three times on this engine and it made a real change not to get lots of ash in my eyes as I was driving it. Phil's first of all going to pick up some passenger trucks and then he'll be picking up some passengers in the station. As my friend Phil from Blackgates Engineering disappears into the distance on his sweet William locomotive that's it for this video, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.